Hi guys, in this video, we are going to look at biology paper two for 2021 internal candidates. Question one, figure 1.1 and 1.2 show freely cut potato chips suspended in solution E and F at the beginning of an experiment and after two hours respectively. So we have solution E, solution F, which is figure 1.1 at the beginning and uh, figure 1.2 at the end of the experiment. Question uh, A1. Explain the differences in appearances of the potato chips in solution E and F after two hours. So after two hours, the potato chip in solution E loses water by osmosis and becomes smaller. Potato chip in solution F gains water by osmosis and becomes bigger. A2. Based on the appearances of the potato chips in solution E, after two hours, what term could be used to describe solution E? So solution E is a hypertonic solution. B1. What would be the state of cells in potato chips in solution F after two hours. So the cells will be turgid. B2, state the importance of the state of cells in B1 above to the plants. Turgidity of cells offers support. C, explain the meaning of the term isotonic solution. So an isotonic solution has the same water potential as the cell cytoplasm. So these were the answers to question number one. Question two, A. Table two shows various food uh, tests carried out by Elena. So we have our test here showing nutrients, test, observation, and conclusion. So A1, complete the table by filling in the spaces. So we have starch, and the test for starch is the iodine test. Then two, we have the test, we have emulsion and white precipitate, so the test here is test for fats. Then for three, uh, since we have white uh, precipitate, it means that uh, fats are present. Then uh, the next uh, line, we have protein and the burette test. And the conclusion is saying protein is present. So meaning that the color changes from more blue to purple. A2. Which nutrient in the table causes kwashoka if lacking in the human body? So if proteins are lacking, an individual suffers from kwashoka. A3. Name a nutrient not in the table which helps to prevent constipation. The nutrient is a roughage. 2b, state 2 deficiency diseases in plants. So deficiency diseases in plants, we can have leaf uh, cirrhosis as well as the leaf flaking. So these were the answers to question number two. Question three, figure three shows a longitudinal section of a taproot. So we have our diagram and we have labeled parts G, H, I, and J. 3a, identify the parts labeled G and J. G is the root hair and J is the top root. Part b, which labeled part in figure 3 is responsible for generating new cells? So new cells are generated in region I where we have the meristematic tissue. Part c, Region H is responsible for cell differentiation. C1, apart from vascular bundles, state two other cell types differentiated by region H. We have corenchyma tissue and parenchyma tissue. We have so many differentiated cells, but we'll only mention two, so we'll mention corenchyma tissue and the parenchyma. C2, State two types of cells found in the vascular bundle. 
So a fascicular bundle contains phloem and the xylem. C3. Which name type of cells in C2 allows movement of substances up and down depending on the needs of plant? The phloem vessel can transport the substances up and down depending on the the needs of the plant, except the xylem, which only transports C upwards. D. Suggest one mere thematic structure, not in the diagram, responsible for bringing about secondary growth in the cotomous plant. This is done by the cambium. These were the answers to question number three. Question four. Figure four shows the structure of the nephron. And we have labeled parts K, A, and M. Part A, identify the parts labeled K and L. Part K is the afferent atrial, and part L is the Bowman's capsule. B1, name two substances present in fluid K, but absent from fluid in M. So the parts which are absent in the glomerulus filtrates can be red blood cells, white blood cells, blood plasmas, as well as the platelets. B2, give two reasons for your answer in B1 above. Blood cells are too big to pass through the walls of the glomerulus, which are too thin. Hence, outer filtration takes a place. C1, state one common disorder associated with the kidney. So one of the common disorders we have is kidney failure. We can also have kidney stones, but we'll simply write kidney failure. C2, explain how the disorder in C1 can be treated. Kidney failure can be treated by using a dialysis machine or kidney transplant. These were the solutions to question number four. Question number five, figure five shows four animal cells at different stages of mitotic division. We have cells one, two, three, and four, which are labeled N, O, P, and D, Q. 5A, name the structures labeled N and D, O. Part N is a nuclear membrane, and O is the chromatid. Part B, at which stages of mitotic division are cells 1 and 3? Cell 1 is at the anaphase and cell 3 is at the metaphase. Part C. A husband and wife were heterozygous for blood group A and B respectively. With the help of a genetic diagram, show the possible blood groups of their children. When writing a genetic cross, we first start with the parental phenotype of the father, blood group A, being crossed with blood group B. So then we indicate on top, mother and father. Then next step, we write the parental genotype. We write AO, heterozygous, and BO, meaning that it's heterozygous. Then we write the gametes. So to write the gametes, we separate. So A, we separate it from O. B, we also separate it from O. Then next, we show the F1 offspring genotype. And we show the random crossing. So A will cross with B, creating AB. A will also cross with O, creating AO. O will then cross with B, creating BO. And O crosses with the O. Then the next step is to write the F1 offspring genotype. So we have blood group AB, blood group A, blood group B, and blood group O. So this is how you write the genetic cross. So whenever we write, do not forget any of these steps. And that's how we are going to score marks. So no shortcuts during this stage. So these were the answers to question number five. Section B, essay questions. Answer any three questions from this section. All answers must be in complete sentences and the paragraphs. Write your answers in the answer sheet booklet provided. Question 6a. Describe the movement of organic solutes in the phloem tissue. Part b. 
outline the process of measuring the rate of transpiration using a potometer. Then part C, explain the factors that affect the rate of transpiration. Question 6a, translocation is the movement of manufactured food from the source to the sink sites through the phloem. The leaves of the plants are the source, while the sink sites are the storage organ of plants. The organic solutes mainly include sucrose and amino acids dissolved in water. The companion cell moves these substances in and out of the phloem by diffusion and active transport. Part B. To prepare a potometer, cut a small branch underwater. The stem size must be approximately equal to the tube width. Then push the cut stem of the branch into the rubber tube while under water to avoid the air bubbles. Then connect the potometer. To prevent evaporation, apply grease. Then expose to the potometer and observe the movement of water in the meniscus. Part C. The factors that affect the rate of transpiration include temperature, humidity, light intensity, and the wind. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of transpiration. The higher the humidity, the lower the rate of transpiration. The higher the light intensity, the higher the rate of transpiration. The higher the wind speed, the higher the rate of transpiration. In addition, disforestation reduces transpiration due to reduced leaf full surface area for transpiration. So these were the answers to question number six. Question 7a. Describe the internal structure of the heart. Part B. Describe the factors that reduce immunity to pathogenic diseases. Part C. Explain the importance of immunization. Question 7a. The heart is a muscular organ that pumps blood around the body in blood vessels. It is made up of cardiac muscles. The heart is divided into left and right by a muscle called the septum. The heart has four chambers, the left atrium, right atrium, left ventricle, and right ventricle. The heart also contains valves, the tricuspid valve, bicuspid valve, aortic semilunar valve, and pulmonary semilunar valve. Part B. The factors that reduce immunity to pathogenic diseases include poor diet, repeated invasion by pathogens, development of resistant strain of pathogens, and lack of exercise. Part C. Immunization is important because it provides protection against infections. Artificial active immunity stimulates production of antibodies which protect against infections. It also helps in prevention of outbreaks of diseases such as measles. So these were the answers to question number 7. Question 8. A. Using named examples, describe animal and wind dispersal of seeds and the fruits. Part B. Explain the importance of fruits and seed dispersal. Answers to question 8a. Animal dispersed seeds have the following characteristics. The presence of hooks to clean to fare of animals, for example, blackjack. The hooks irritate the animal, causing it to shake off the seeds some distance away from the parent plant. The fruits of some fruits are succulent to attract and reward animals like mangoes. They have brightly colored epicups to attract animals when ripe, for example, oranges. They have hard tester that are resistant to digestive enzymes found in the guts of animals, for example, guavas. They have scented fruits to attract animals, for example, oranges. Wind dispersed fruits have the following characteristics. They have parachutes of hairs formed from sepals after fertilization that causes the fruits to float, thereby delaying landing, for example, dandelion seeds. They have wing-like structures that cause the fruits to float in air, for example, sycamore seeds. Part B, the importance of seed dispersal is to reduce the competition for light, space, and nutrients. It allows plants to colonize new areas, 
it reduces the chances of extinction in case plants in one area are destroyed. It is also an important stage for plant propagation. Some seeds only germinate after passing through the digestive system of animals. So these were the solutions to question number eight. Question number nine. A. Describe the function of the following hormones. Number one, thyroxine. Two, glucagon. B. Explain the causes of short sight and how it can be corrected. Part C. Suggest ways by which deafness can be prevented in humans. Answers to question number 9. A1. Thyroxine controls the basal metabolic rate of the body. It stimulates respiration of glucose and fats. It also controls the growth and differentiation of cells. A2. Glucagon increases the glucose levels in blood. It causes the liver cells and muscle cells to convert glycogen to glucose. It causes fats to be changed into glucose and may cause proteins to be modified so that they are utilized for energy production during starvation. Part B. Short sight or myopia is caused by abnormally long eyeball or permanently thick lenses. It is controlled by using a concave lens. Part C. Deafness is prevented by avoiding overproduction of wax, avoiding inserting sharp objects into the ear which may damage the eardrum, avoid infections of the inner ear, and avoid excess noise. Also have regular visits to an ear specialist. In noisy environments, use ear protective gear. These were the answers to question number 9. Question 10a. Explain the meaning of the following ecological terms. 1. Habitat. 2. Community. 3. Niche. Part B1. Using named examples, explain what a food chain is. B2. Explain how energy flows in the food chain. Solutions to question 10. A1. Habitat is a specific place where an organism lives. A2. Community is a group of populations found in the same area which interact with each other. A3. Niche is a specific role played by an organism in an ecosystem. Part B. A food chain is a sequence of feeding relationships that begin with producers and involves at least three organisms. The feeding levels of an organism in a food chain are called trophic levels. An example of a food chain is given below. Grass is eaten by a grasshopper, then the grasshopper is eaten by a bird, and the bird is eaten by a snake. Part C. The principal source of energy for any food chain is the sun. Energy from the sun is called solar energy. Solar energy is captured by green plants during the process of photosynthesis and converted to chemical energy. Because of their capacity to produce uh, food, plants are called producers. Animals that feed on plants are called primary consumers. Those that feed on primary consumers are called secondary consumers. And those that feed on secondary consumers are called tertiary consumers. When energy moves from one trophic level to another, only 10% of the energy is passed on. The energy is lost through respiration, ejection, and excretion. These were the solutions to question number 10. When you are done with answering any three questions from section B, make sure to fill in your question numbers which you've answered under section B. So for example, you can write question 10, 6, or 9. The order does not matter. It has to be according to the way you've answered. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like. You can also share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel if you have not yet subscribed so that you don't miss out anytime I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again in the next video. Bye for now.